We've been looking at various ways Microsoft Excel can provide basic database functions and help us expand our use of WordPress pages on our website. In the last video we saw how to get some simple PHP coding in our WordPress page to present data which Excel had automatically downloaded from Yahoo's UK financial website and uploaded to our web server. By the way, a word of warning, if you hadn't seen the other videos leading up to this one, it might be better to do so first. It could be tough going and we're going to skip stuff we've already dealt with. We got to the stage where the data on our page, loosely dealing with some UK oil companies, could be automatically updated up to once a minute if necessary. But the page was permanently resident on our server. If we wanted more pages, we'd have to code them all by hand, which is okay for a handful but a real pain for hundreds. So now we're going to go for the whole package. We want PHP to create those unlimited number of pages for us and make them all searchable and updatable automatically every minute if we really need it. So we can go straight on to the PHP coding in WordPress. We're going to look at two pages. The first is our share page. That is the page with all the details of one particular company on it including up-to-date share price information. Our WordPress permalink for this is share-page, which we'll need later on for our code. The second will be our search routine page, and the permalink for that is search-share. On our share page, we'll add an HTML drop-down menu form to test our code. We've seen this before in an early video, so we'll just touch on it. Notice the form action is the same page our results will appear on. Also, the value of the menu selection will travel under the variable name of share. The choice is made, the submit button clicked, and now our PHP code on our server is ready to receive our variable value, which it passes to a variable we've called row. By the way, we've added the index values and field headings at the top of our code so you can see what's what. After opening our Excel generated and uploaded text file UK shares, we come to another important step. In a previous video, we opened up our whole file into a two dimensional array which matched our Excel data table. Now, this is just fine for small files of a few records, say five or 50, but suppose we had 5,000 or even 50,000 records. This process will be slow and wasteful of resources, so we're going to come up with something new. The point is we already know what number record we want. It's in our variable row. So we'll set up our for loop, that's the same as the for next loop in Visual Basic, to count out the same number of lines in our file. When the loop's finished, it will have stopped at the line we need. This means we don't need to concern ourselves about the remaining lines in our file. And we don't even have to look at the lines we're going through. It's a bit like flipping the pages in a book to get to the page we want to read. One point. Notice the separator in our explode function is space, comma, space, and not just a comma. As we saw before, commas are used in finance to denote thousands, so could cause problems in our CSV data file. The next line of code calculates how much the share price has risen or fallen since the opening of the market using two values from our array. Notice in the current rise for section, we've added a number format function to keep our values at just two decimal places. If you've seen the last video, the rest should be straightforward. It may look a bit tough, but if you look closely, you see it's just more of the same. Various share array values, linked with text and bits of HTML. But let's have a quick look at it in action. We'll choose a company from the menu and click Submit, and this is the result. And we can click on the link to the Yahoo page all our financial data is coming from. If we set our Excel automatic uploader on, this data could just be a few minutes behind the market for all page users, and for as long as the market is open. We saw this working in the last video. Okay, so now let's look at the search page. And we've covered most of this before in videos three and four. Again, we have another form, but this time it's for a text box. 
the user will use this to enter their text, which will then be sent back as the value for the variable search to the search share page on our server. Notice a couple of important things. We're using the post method to send our text. Without going into details, post is generally more secure than the get method we used with our drop down menu. And we've also got a function called HTML special characters wrapped around our post method. Now, anytime you open up your website to others through text boxes, you're at risk of malicious behavior. It's a bit like fitting a new front door without locks and bolts. And this function basically disables anything sent from the text box, which it considers harmful. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Apart from a different file, the next lines are the same as before. In the while loop, function fget loads our file one line at a time into variable row which then contains everything concerning one company, its ID, its stock ticker, Excel financial data, pretty well all the text we want for our page and our keywords. The whole of row is then checked by another function, stripost, to see if our search text is anywhere inside it. If variable string position registers false, it means nothing can be found, and we go around the loop again to pick up the next line in our file. If we do find a match, we then create an array called share to contain all our bits of data. As we did in video four, we'll check our text in share eight to see if our search text is in there. And if it is, we'll extract 250 characters from the point it is found to give a bit of flavor to our search result. If the search term is not in the text, then presumably it's in the keywords list. So we'll just take 250 characters from the beginning of our text. The interesting line is the link reference to our share page. The query string contains a variable called share and we're attaching to it the value of our array share zero, which is our old friend, the share ID number we saw before when constructing our data file in Visual Basic. Finally, we print everything we found out or admit we found nothing. So let's see this in action. We've typed in oil, which since we are dealing with oil companies ought to be a no-brainer. As you can see, each result has a link to the share page, the latest market price, and a little bit of text to go with it. If we click on the link, we pass over to the PHP share page we created a few minutes ago, and we're back where we started. And there we are, a pretty powerful little application which is only limited by the size of your Excel table. And whilst it doesn't have the sophistication of a proper database, for many purposes it's more than suitable. It has the advantages of needing precious little knowledge of PHP and none at all of SQL. Plus you have complete control over your data in your Excel worksheet. So in the next video we're going to jazz things up a bit and see if we can come up with something a bit more exciting than pages of share data. Since the world is full of music videos, how about we build a music album catalogue using the techniques we've just learned. In the meantime, thanks for watching.